Hello everybody, my name is the Deuteron Doctor, and today, welcome to KITS, Kit Introductions to Splatoon. KITS is a series where I go over the different kits of a certain weapon, and tell you how to play that kit the correct way, or at least the way I believe is correct. Anyways, the first weapon we'll be talking about in the reimagining of the KITS series is the Undercover Cerebrella. I will not be covering how to play the weapon itself, if you want that, you're going to have to go to the original video, and that will be linked in the title card. The Undercover Cerebrella, it has a decent kit, but it's kind of weird. I can see where it could be offensive, but I see a lot of its defensive utility at the same time. So in terms of how you're supposed to play it, I can see it going both ways. The sub for the Undercover Cerebrella is the Torpedo, same like in Splatoon 2, I believe where it had the torpedo and you just kind of throw it over and over and over and over and over at the enemies and hope they die. It's basically just an annoying tool. If you throw it directly on the ground it'll act like a splat bomb so if you need to get some damage in or you need to secure a very crucial kill you can do that but it doesn't leave a lot of utility. The torpedo is kind of not a great sub to put on umbrella as is, in my opinion, but other than that, the special is the splatter color screen. And the splatter color screen is basically a small kind of rain bomb sized kind of canister, I guess, that you throw on the ground. And once you throw it on the ground, it props up into basically the world's biggest umbrella but you can pass through it as much as you want and you can shoot through it. You can't really see much through it, but there are some openings for that and the enemies cannot shoot through it back and it will very, very, very slowly move forward until it runs out of time for the special or it phases through the map. It also damages your enemies for 30 and renders their game in grayscale for probably five or six seconds which isn't much. It is very hectic if you have more than one because it can cover on some maps up to half the map. Like Inkplot Art Academy, I was playing on it earlier today and it was just chaos because it just covers too much of the map. In my opinion, it should be shrank down because if you use it higher, it, it gets its full height too and you could just throw it down on high ground and it will basically just sweep over the whole map. Now what it doesn't do, like a umbrella canopy, is paint the floor. It will not paint the floor for you, but it'll render your enemy in grayscale again and, you know, damage them for 30. I can see where that would come in handy in a defensive situation. The grayscale, you can kind of get past it if you know your ink colors really well and you aren't colorblind. <laughs> if you are colorblind, it's going to be very hard to tell the color difference between the inks. I see where it can be useful. I don't think it has that much of an impact, especially if you know what you're doing. It's kind of like the blooper from Mario Kart 8, where it covers your screen, but like, if you know what you're doing, you can get past it. Obviously, this doesn't cover your screen, it changes it to grayscale, but again, if you know what you're doing, you can get around it very, very easily. It also gives you a lot of availability to run away because enemies can't really see through it all that well. So if you are trying to sneak up to somebody, I could see that being very good cover to sneak up to them because they're going to expect you to be behind it. But if you have Ninja Squid, for example, you throw it down, you use Ninja Squid, you just prop up next to them and then you smack them with like a roller or a brush or something. It could definitely work. But again, that's an offensive use. It feels like it's a defensive tool, but it works more offensively than defensively, given that it doesn't too much. If it did 30 for every single second that you're in there, or I mean 60 for every second you're in there, and not just when you pass it, it does 30, I could see it being good. But given the availability, well, given the utility that it has already, I don't think it's that great of a special. Anyways, that's really all I have to say for the kit. But before I go, I will 
tell you the abilities that I recommend for said kit. The abilities that I'm going to recommend for this kit are going to be Ink Saver Sub, Ink Resistance Up, and Ninja Squid. The reason I'm saying Ink Saver Sub is because the Torpedo, again, takes a lot of ink and it doesn't give you a lot of utility. So lowering the ink consumption will kind of make up for the lack of its utility if you don't, you know, lose all of your ink the second you use it. The reason I said ink resistance up is because, again, the lack of utility and the lack of floor painting below you, especially paired with the weapon it has where it paints a little bit but not enough to make a significant amount. So it can leave you in really dangerous areas and really dangerous situations where your team is not able to come over to you in time or you're not able to escape in time. So that's the reason I chose that. And the reason I chose Ninja Squid is just because the special is so good at hiding you that it makes it near impossible for an enemy to know your exact location if you can hide behind a giant wall that faces through the map. The reason I'm not recommending more abilities is because in this series I do not recommend a bunch of abilities because the weapon already has its abilities recommended in the original video, which again I will link in the iCard, but I'll recommend at least a couple. Anyways, my name is the Deuteron Doctor, and I will see you later. Bye!